There we go. What's up, guys? We are back. Fitness, profit, multiplier, Anthony and Jimmy. Today, we're going to be giving you the secret. The secret to go from zero to 20K per month. So 20K per month is like that, that, that point where it's like, okay, I, make, I have a good established business. Mm -hmm. So we're going to basically blueprint out the one thing that you need to do in order to get to 20K per month. If you're making less than 20K, this episode is for you. And even if you're making over 20K, I'm sure there's some things that you might have missed that you're not doing that you would still get value out of this one. Yeah. And 20K a month, I mean, you're talking about a quarter of a million dollar, basically a quarter of a million dollar a year business, right? Um, you're a quarter That's of a That's so much better than 20K per month. Yeah. Quarter of a million a year. I know. This is like, so we will talk about quarter million, half million, three fourths of a million, right? Whatever. But, you know, you still, you got to hit quarter mil before you hit a mil. So you're going, you're getting a quarter of the way there. And honestly, at, at 20K a month, you can afford some payroll. Your rent is covered. You're making some profit. Like things are going decent for you. Not great, but decent um, at that point. Uh, I don't think things go great until you get to 50 or 60K a month, but um, <clears throat> I digress. So what is it that you need to be doing to go from zero to 20K? And the one thing that we see with gym owners that we know that's a big problem is that they focus on too many little things to really get to where they want to go. So they have a morning routine and they're reading this book and they're reading that book and they're in this program and that program and, and they're following this person on social media and that person and they're watching YouTube and trying to, you know, improve their, their skills as a trainer and all this Stuff and going to seminars and doing all these things that in all reality are not getting them closer to where they want to be. Or maybe even they're spending time socially with their friends. They're spending time uh, dating or um, sleeping in or partying on the weekends, right? But what we have to look at what it really takes to build your business in the beginning stages is deleting everything in your life that isn't what we call mission critical, okay? Mission critical is the lens that you have to look through when you're really trying to build something great. And if it's not mission critical, it needs to be deleted, at least for that time. Now, I'm not saying you don't pick up the phone when your mom calls you. But what I'm saying is, if you're wasting time with things that are not mission critical, it's going to take you a lot longer to get there, and you maybe won't even get to that 20K mark. Yeah, I like how you called it mission critical. Um, and, and this comes back to what people always talk about, which is like focus. You know, you have to be focused. And, and uh, one of my good friends, he's my brother-in-law, actually. He, you know, he was my friend first and he became my brother-in-law. But he has this whole saying and he used to call it, you know, focused. Follow one course until successful. And that statement is so true. And I think Alex Hormozzi talks about this with the woman in the red dress. And how every stage in your business, the woman in the red dress gets sexier and sexier. Or if you're, a, you know, the, prefer the other way, the guy in the red suit gets hotter and hotter, but whatever. Um, but neither here nor there. It's like these things tempt you. And Jimmy mentioned a couple of them, you know, go into this seminar to get better at training and going, uh, you know, doing this morning routine. And it, it's just a woman in the red dress. That's basically what it is. It's, it's a distraction from what you're trying to do. You know, maybe you are, you opened up this gym, you signed up this lease, and then you came across someone online who's making a gazillion dollars being an online trainer. That's the woman in the red dress. Cause now you're like, Oh, maybe I need to do that. Maybe I need to shift my business online. No, you sign this lease, focus, follow this course until successful, until you get it to the point 
where you don't have to be running it day to day, then you can look at the woman in the red dress and maybe take a pivot and do something else. Like Jimmy and I, at the point that we're at in our businesses, we're able to start this second thing because our focus it doesn't have to be on those main things anymore. But when you're going from zero to 20K, that focus needs to be solely on doing that mission. Exactly. <clears throat> I mean, Anthony and I could talk about the early stages of our businesses and what it actually took. You know, it was 70 hour work weeks. It was fully focusing all of your attention and effort on growing this business and then spinning it up to get it to a point where you can actually take some time and have some freedom. I mean, there were times when I remember when I built out the gym, uh, I had nine days to turn a fully functioning salon into a functional like gym space um, because of the way the lease lined up and when I had to be out of my, my current space that I was like subletting space from. And nine days, I turned a salon into a gym. I was jackhammering tile at 3 a.m. trying to get this thing ready. And that's the kind of stuff it takes to get there, right? And you have to be resourceful. And, and it's just so funny because you hear about gym owners that are like, oh, well, I have this gym, but I also work full time somewhere else. Or I have this gym that I'm trying to build, but I have a part time job doing this other thing. And I'm like, what are you doing? Burn the boats, go mission critical, and go all in on this goal of growing this gym and get rid of all the distractions. And we talk about like going to seminars or this or that, but the distractions are also like your significant other could be a distraction, right? And I'm not saying ruin that relationship, but have conversations with that person so that they understand what it's gonna take and what focus you need to have, right? Your friends could be a distraction. Your family could be a distraction, right? There are things that are preventing you from actually getting to where you want to go and realize that it's only a couple of years of this. So get the flywheel spinning and get it going. And then, and then you, can, uh, you can kind of come back around to those people. But that's what it takes to spin it up to a point where you're actually where you want to be. I can't tell you how many gym owners we know or are friends with that don't work hard enough in their fitness business or have excuses for reasons as to why they're not growing it. Oh, well, I live too far away from the gym. Or, oh, well, I've got this, that, or the other thing. Or I'm doing this side venture. Or I'm doing this other thing. Or I'm doing online training or whatever it may be. And it's like, that's why your gym isn't growing. Like, grow the one, grow that thing. <clears throat> anyway. Yeah, I mean, uh, I had something I wasn't going to say and I forgot. But it was basically, you know, like, when you want to, like Jimmy mentioned, you have to put the hours in to, to get this thing spinning and get this ball rolling. But it also means like working smarter, not harder. And this is why I wish we would have had each other earlier on in that situation, because I had started with one-on-one. So I was working 70 hours a week in a one-on-one -on -one environment. Whereas even when Jimmy was working 70 hours, it was in a semi-private way. So he was able to service way more members than I was able to service. So I, if I would have just not changed anything and just made that one simple shift from going from one-on-one -on -one to semi-private and a more scalable model, I would have made more money working 70 hours than I was working 70 hours. So it's all about working smarter and having the right coach and mentor with you to help you to get to that next level. Because sometimes it's out of your realm. Like for me, I just didn't think semi-private was the thing until I found and got around the right people who were doing it. But if I didn't get around those people who were doing it, I might have never made that switch. And my business would have looked totally different today. So it's not about just working hard. It's also about working smart to get to that goal. So for example, if I want to grow my gym from zero to 20K, it doesn't necessarily mean that I have to do all the sessions. Like maybe the, initially I have to start doing the session, but until I get it to a point where I can afford to hire somebody else, I can offload those sessions onto somebody else pay that payroll and whatever I'm paying in that payroll, go and do a higher level test to fill the gym faster. So right. it's all about scaling and getting to certain levels. It's almost like, um, I would say like trying to like 
the growth of for those of you watching this on YouTube, you know, the growth is never goes up. It's always like, it's like a step up, then it plateaus, then another step up and it plateaus. And it's kind of looks like that till you get to a certain point. So it's like, you want to get to that point where you reach that new peak and then scale it and then go up again and go up again. And that's kind of how you have to do it. So it's always, it's, I, cause, and I, I'm glad I learned this because I'm the type of person that's like, okay, I got to do this. Roll up my sleeves and I just go to work and I could work 70, 80 hours a week, but that doesn't necessarily mean growth. And that's right. the difference. And what Jimmy's talking about with mission critical is focusing on this goal, but not having to do everything yourself. Right. It's, it's the, the notion of the focus on the tasks that need to be accomplished, not the badge of honor of working your face off. That's not what this is about. It's about focusing on what actually matters. It's about not distracting yourself with stupid things that aren't getting you anywhere. It's about taking that sacrifice where you know you have to learn more about this advertising platform or get a new trainer in your gym or train all these sessions in the beginning or build out the gym or whatever and making those sacrifices in your personal life to focus on what's mission critical instead of just going out and drinking every weekend to fill your time with social time, right? Sometimes you got to sacrifice those things to be successful. And if you're not willing to sacrifice those things, burn your boats and just zone in and get mission critical on that next step, you're not going to make it there. So it's about focus, not about the badge of honor of being a melting your face working kind of person, you know? And this is why I think it's so critical to get a coach like almost right away in this process, because it can help you to focus on the right things and not focus and get distracted by other things or getting into the trap where sometimes Jimmy and I find each other is tinkering too much. Cause like, okay, I have this goal of getting to 20 K that's where I want to go. I want to get to 20 K a month. So things are working, things are starting to move. And then, you know, maybe you're not doing as much of the sessions or maybe you're just like, okay, I have to work on this. So you just decide to change stuff because you can, and right. that's tinkering. And this is why having a good coach, a good mentor can keep you on the, the right path. And like I said, I'm, I drew that little thing before keeping you on that right track where it's like, sometimes we screw ourselves up because we're just like, okay, I want to get this done. And you're yeah. all over the place and you're making the wrong decisions. You're tinkering. The difference between tinkering and doing the hard work. And I would say the hard work sometimes. And, and if we want to kind of outline this, understanding how marketing works, figuring out a paid acquisition strategy for your client, figuring out a system to training the clients effectively for their program, you know, figuring out how to retain clients more. And those are probably the four things you just need to focus on if you want to get there. And then just figuring out how to keep scaling and scaling and scaling. Maybe that means raising your prices. You know, these are things, but too much tinkering, no good. 100%. So let's get mission critical, guys. Delete the distractions, laser focus, and attack this business like you've burned every boat behind you and it's the only option. Even if you have a safety net, treat it as if it's the only option and the only way that you have to survive. And that will give you a lot higher probability that you'll be successful. And if a coach is behind you in your corner, even better. Yeah. And if you guys are interested in that, you can click that link below. You can book a call with us and we can talk to you about your business, like legit call, leave your credit card at home. You know, don't worry about any of that stuff. We're not trying to sell you anything. We just want to help you. And we even have a free training for you down there. So if you're trying to grow your gym, free training to add 10 clients, seven days with zero ad spend, pick that up below. Anthony and Jimmy, Fitness Profit Multiplier, and we are out.